Good morning guys and girls. Uh, today we're going to be talking about probably the most commonly caught shark along the entire coast. Now excluding maybe the Cape area, um, if you really look at KZN, the first shark that many, uh, a lot of guys catch and girls catch and a shark which is really increased in uh, the numbers of, of or at least the amount of targeting that it gets maybe not necessarily numbers over the last few years the dusky now the dusky also known as a gray shark ridgeback gray um, all sorts of other foul names you can't mention the scientific name is cochrinus obscurus now the shark itself uh, very similar often confused with other sharks it's a very nondescript kind of color. Uh, you're looking at a gray, overall gray color, white belly. Um, and the juveniles, at least, are probably the most, are the most commonly caught, uh, caught shark. They inhabit the sort of shallowy areas, um, close inshore waters. And for very good reason, they don't like going offshore. They are a loved food source by all the other sharks and by some of your bigger fish, your brindle bass, your potato bass, and then maybe even your GTs. Now, your, what, the big distinguishing feature of the gray shark sort of comes from one of its names, which is the ridgeback gray shark. Now, between the dorsal and the, the anal fin, you have a little ridge. It's almost like someone's taken the skin and pinched it all the way along like that. And that's a very, very easy way to identify it between it and, say, a bronze whaler. Now I just have to put your hand behind the dorsal and you'll see it straight away. It's a very, very defining feature. Even when they, they baby baby, you'll still be able to see it straight away. So as soon as you see that, you know it's a gray shark. Anything else, then you've got to worry about small differences in fins and all sorts of things like that. Now, in terms of your size of your fish, you're looking at a shark which grows to very, very large proportions. You're getting a, a shark that go over four meters in length. Um, I think 4.2 is about the biggest that they've recorded there, thereabouts. Um, and a very old live or long living shark. They get to over over 30 years of age. So it's a very uh, slowly growing, longer living species. Now, your as we mentioned, the juveniles are really gonna be in your shallow areas. Um, that's obviously for protection against the bigger sharks. And your, your big females and males are gonna be from say backline but really more deep areas from about 200 meters to 400 meters in depth they, they're big pelagic sharks they they need a lot of food and that's where all the bigger food items are now in terms of what they're going to eat uh, much like most of your other sharks they will eat anything they get their hands on or at least their fins and it's really going to be focused more around fish but they will obviously eat uh, carrion I'm going to call it marine carrion so dead whale dead turtle anything floating on the surface they will eat that and uh, your fish are probably going to be the predominant fish rays and uh, and smaller sharks also going to be high up on their list of, of food items now when it comes to your maturity your your males are going to reach maturity around about 2.6 to 3 meters thereabouts um, we're talking about uh, pre caudal length and your females round about sort of the same area. Now, when it comes to, as I mentioned, pre caudal length, yeah, that's a very important thing. When you're measuring sharks, sharks are measured from the tip of the nose, along the back, depending, from the tip of the nose to the notch where the tail starts. So if the tail goes up like that, there's an actual notch there. Now, pre caudal, caudal is the tail fin, and pre caudal just before. So just before the tail fin there, there's a little notch. So you measure from the nose to that notch itself. Um, when it comes to where you're gonna locate them on our coast, that kind of thing, they, the pups are born in, in winter, and that's to coincide with that sardine run, with that vast majority of food that's around. Now, the big adults will move in from offshore, and they'll move along, and they'll actually follow the sardine shoal as it moves up the coast. So. When it comes to wanting to target the big boys from the surf, you're really gonna look at more than likely having to drone a bait, because to get a bait big enough to attract that shark, you're really gonna have to get it out quite a distance, and the only way to get a big bait like that is either with a bait boat or a drone or a kite. So you can't actually, you can't slide a bait big enough for, for them. Now, the juveniles are fairly easy to catch. Um, they are sometimes quite sensitive to wire, but Generally, uh, a wire trace, a 6-0 circle look, and 
So short white trays, 6 o circle lock and a head bait of sorts. So whether it's mackerel, whether it's mullet, whether it's red eye, um, anything like that, nice and fleshy, maybe with some cutlets on, just gives it a nice meaty, meaty mouthful for it to, to get. They also do really, really enjoy chocker. So adding chocker onto your baits is always a good, good call. And, uh, and yeah, it's one of those species that the competitive guys at least have really started targeting in the, the in more recent years because they make up your points very quickly. Having said that though, there has been a bit of a decline in the actual grey sharks um, in numbers. The offshore guys will tell you the exact opposite, but the juveniles inshore, we don't get the grey shark smash as we used to. I mean, there used to be tons and tons of grey sharks caught. That might allude to why we don't get them anymore, because they used to take them all out. But yeah, it's a, it's a species that locally at least, it's more of a recreational species. They are, believe it or not, quite good eating. Um, there's actually a big market, there used to be a big export market from South Africa to Australia for, for eating quality, or for eating purposes at least. But they, um, the, the main important thing is that with the, the large liver size, you get vitamin A and all sorts of other things that, and uh, urea buildup that, that can actually poison the, the meat itself. So if you are going to keep the fish, head off, stomach out, all the guts out, tail out, all the fins off, and uh, you want to actually leave it in a rock pool or something like that. That salty water really helps to get rid of all the anything that's built up, any of the ammonia and things built up in the, the blood. It is not a pretty process. So those are the faint heart, those um, not wanting to offend anybody. It's really not something you should do. It's, it's, and it's something you have to do if you want to eat the, eat the meat. But yeah, great shark, lovely species to catch, nice and strong. Um, you can get them on light to medium tackle, the small guys, and the big girls, and uh, most of them are, are, are female, the big, the big individuals. You're really gonna wanna go with the heaviest tackle possible. So if you want something that's known to, or that's proven itself, tackle that's proven itself, and that has landed many big gray sharks off Mazeppa and all sorts, you need only look at uh, Tyron and Jeremy Bain's videos. Those uh, gray sharks they've caught are absolutely monstrous and that's with the saltest 8 to 12 and the saltigo dogfight with uh, j bread on it like that that's a combo that has worked beautifully for them it keeps ticking on it they bring it in for service the thing looks brand new inside so it's one of those reels that really can handle that so if you're looking for those big ones that's really the combo to go for nothing else compares now for the juveniles like i mentioned light to medium tackle they really aren't uh, extremely strong fighters but they do give a good go of themselves so if you're wanting to get started get going in that uh, inedible side of things if you don't want to go for a skate if you do want to catch a shark your gray shark really is the one to go for so yeah gray sharks duskies whatever you call them they are fantastic species and really good good ones to have on the species list cheers